Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be going over how to create an AI sight detection and chase system in which we'll also be using combat or fight music. So when the AI is chasing you, or when you're fighting, or whatever you want, the music will be playing in the background, and as soon as the combat ends, the music is also going to slowly fade out and end along with it. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So an enemy has seen me, so he is now chasing me, like so, and we have two of them as well. They immediately lost sight of me, so we can change that as well if you wanted, so it's not as sensitive. But I made it that sensitive so I can easily lose sight of them for the purpose of the video. As you see, one of them see me, he's now chasing. Both of them have seen me and the music isn't overlapping, it's not playing double. And if I were to hide away from them or just press 1 so they can't see me, you'll notice they've now stopped seeing me and the music has faded out like so. If I had to go back in and have him see me, or he's run past me, have one of them see me. There we go. He's now chasing me with the music playing. Again, if multiple see me, it doesn't overlap. And as soon as I hide away from them, they'll stop. The music will leave as well. So this is what we're going over in Crane today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to actually import the music we're going to be using. Now, if you want to use the one which I'm using in this video, I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. It's a copyright free flight music from YouTube, which I've imported here. I downloaded it to MP3 and converted it to WAV16, as to use audio in Unreal, you need it to be in a WAV 16-bit format. And what I've also done is this one's rather loud, so I've lowered down the volume to 0.2 and also ticked it so it's going to be looping. You do want to make sure it loops so the music just doesn't randomly end, it does loop around, and change the volume according to what you want. So that is still quite a bit loud, so you maybe want to lower it a bit more, for example 0.1. So we'll save and close that. Next, we want to open up our game mode. So for me, that's going to be third person BP, blueprints, third person game mode, or use your own one if you've created a custom one. Open this up straight away, and all we need to do in here is just create a variable. So I'm going to hit plus variable here, naming this music playing question mark like so, compile and save. And the reason we're doing that is so that we can have multiple instances of the AI in the level without them all playing their own music every time they see the player and having them overlap. This will just mean that however many AIs we have, they'll always only be playing the one soundtrack at once, but they can all play their own if they need to. So if one of them sees me, they can play it. It doesn't always have to be the same AI that sees me. So I hope that makes sense. Default value is obviously going to be false, and we're going to close this straight away. Also make sure you're the, that your game mode is assigned to this level in your world settings. Here under the game mode override, I've got mine as the third person game mode. If you don't have the world settings, what you can do is go to window up at the top left and just press world settings there and it should take you to it, it should bring it up like so. Now we want to actually start setting up our AI. So if you don't have an AI already, what you can do is select the character blueprint, control C, and then just control V to paste it. So you've now got duplicated it, so you have your own character blueprint for your AI. Open it up straight away, delete everything you don't need, so all the code that's in there and everything else in the viewport, which you don't need. Now you'll notice I've already got my random roam code. If you don't have that, you can just copy this or watch a video which I've already set up and done previously. But the first thing we want to do is go to the viewport and we want to actually enable the AI site detection. So the one I'm going to be using is add component and I'm going to use pawn sensing. You can use the AI perception if you want, but for sight I personally use pawn sensing and for hearing I prefer the AI perception. It's just down to personal preference. So if the pawn sensing, if we compile, we can actually see it all come up here. Now I'm not going to be changing this around too much, however the settings I'm going to use is about 2000 for the site radius. Sensing interval I'll leave at 0.5, that's just how quickly it's going to be checking, so every half a second it will check to see if it's sensed something. I'm going to make sure we only sense players, we see pawns, and the peripheral vision angle, basically the angle which the AI can see, is not 90. I'm going to put it as 45 degrees. Now a human's peripheral vision angle is usually between 50 and 60, so you might want to put it as that as well, but I'm just putting it as 45 as that makes a bit more sense for this AI. I don't want it to be able to see me too much, just to make the game a bit easier for the player. So 55 might be more realistic if that's what you wanted, and you know what actually I will put it as 55 I've decided, and obviously 2000 really isn't very far to see, but again 
I don't want them to be able to see too far for the purpose of my game. So these are the settings I'm going to be using. Once we've done this, we want to go down to the events and press on see pawn here. So this event is going to fire off whenever the AI sees a player. We're going to compile and save, and we're actually going to come back to this later on. Firstly, we're going to scroll back up a bit, and we want to do something off event begin play first. So I'm going to hold down P, left click to get event begin play. What we want to do is cast to the third person game mode blueprint, or essentially the game mode you are using. Object is obviously going to be get game mode. And as third person game mode, all we're going to do is just right click, promote it to a variable and name this game mode ref for reference, like so. What I'm also going to do is call my custom event of random roam, just so that when the game begins, the AI is going to immediately start random roaming. If you don't have a random roam, you don't have to do that. I'm going to compile and save that. Now I also want to set up actually chasing the player. So I've got my random roam, I also want chase. So underneath this, I'm going to right click, add a custom event, name this one chase player, or just chase, whatever you want. And I'm going to add an input on here, naming this target or player, whatever you want. And I'm going to change the variable type to be a pawn object reference down here. So just get pawn and click it, compile and save that. And now we have our own custom event in which we can chase a player via a specific target. So all we need to do is drag out of this, get AI move to, with the pawn being self, as the pawn is the AI that is moving, the target actor will be our target from the chase player there. So it's going to move the AI towards the player target. Very simple, that's all we need to do for our chase custom event there, like so. So we can compile and save that. Now the last bit is just setting it up so the AI will chase the player when they see them and also play the music. So let's scroll down back to our on see pawn pawn sensing event here. What I'm going to do is hold down S, left click to get a sequence, connecting that into there, like so. Then zero is going to set a boolean. So we're going to hit the plus variable here to create another boolean called is chasing question mark. Compile, save, hold alt, drag it in to set it off of then zero, and we're going to set it to true so the AI is chasing. Now I'm not actually going to be using this variable within this video, I'm only going to be setting it. However, I'm just doing this in case you want to actually use this in your code later on. So if you want the AI to be able to only do something when they're chasing or not do something when they're chasing, you can use this here. So that's just some good future proofing, which I like to do. Then we're going to drag out a pawn as that's the target, the pawn that we have seen or the AI has seen, sorry. And what we're going to do is chase player, the custom event there, connecting that into the set is chasing like so. Target, leaving as self as that target is the blueprint and the target below is the pawn. So actually that's not a great naming convention there. I might rename this to be player as that would make more sense to so compile. So the player is now the pawn that we are chasing or you can even name it pawn if you wanted as well. And I mean, that's simple enough. That's now gonna chase the player when they see them. However, we also want them to stop chasing the player and again, obviously play the music. So let's first do stop chasing. So out of then one, we're going to get a re-triggerable delay. And I'm gonna set this delay to be one second. Now what this does is after the second is up, it's gonna stop chasing the player. So we can set is chasing to be false. And I'm also just gonna do my random roam as that means they're now stopping chase and going into their random roam. If you don't have random roam, you want to do something else to actually stop them moving. So either create random roam, make them go into a patrol, or just do stop movement immediately. Now the delay, let's go back to this, is re-triggerable because this means it will restart from the duration every time it's fired off. So every time the AI senses the player, this will fire off, which means it will start again. So once this is completed, it's finished a second, that means that the player hasn't been seen by the AI for more than a second, so it will stop chasing. So this value here, you will increase to mean that the AI has a longer kind of search duration. So you might run around a corner for two seconds. The AI obviously knows you've gone around the corner, so it will still keep chasing. So you might want to put this to maybe five seconds. So five seconds after you've hidden, it will continue searching or continue going towards the player. And then after that, it will stop. Again, I'm putting it as one second for the purpose of the tutorial, 
but you can obviously mess about with this to get a better value for you. So now we've got it set up to start and stop chasing the player. Now all we need to do is also add in the music. So to do that, I'm going to hold down S, left click to get two sequences here like so, connect those into chase and random roam like this. Then I'm going to hold down O, left click to get it do once, connecting that into then zero of the first sequence. So we're going to be starting the music here, so this is off of chase. The reset is going to be then zero of the second sequence, as once the AI stops chasing the player, we're going to reset this do once so we can start the music again. Underneath this do once, we're going to hold control and drag in our game mode reference to get it. Out of this, we're going to get is music playing, or actually I just called it get music playing, like so. And this is going to go into a branch. So we can hold down B, left click to get a branch, connect it into the complete of the do once, and the condition being the music playing. So if the music is or isn't already playing, or it's active, whatever you want to name it. If it is already playing, we're not going to do anything. If it's not already playing, then we want to start playing it. So we're going to come out of the game of reference again and set music playing, setting this one to true, so tick it. And we also then want to start playing the music. So out of this, we're going to spawn sound 2D, with the sound being the music we're using. So I named mine combat music like so. Return value, we're going to right click, promote to variable, naming this combat music. That makes the most sense for me. And then we can compile and save. That's all we need to do. You don't need to get the play, as it'll play automatically when you spawn it in. So the reason why we've done this is music playing here is obviously it's going to be false and we've got to do once so it's not going to fire more than once anyway. However, this is again used for multiple AIs. So if another AI starts detecting and chasing a player after one is already chasing, the music will already be playing so that AI doesn't need to start playing music as well as it's already playing. So that's why we have this here. Now we need to be able to stop the music. So that's quite similar. What we're going to do is on the second sequence here, hold down O, left click again to get another do once, that going into then one, and then one of the other sequence goes into reset. So every time the AI starts chasing the player, it will reset this do once here, so we can stop the music. Then we're going to get our combat music, so hold control and get combat music here. And what we're going to do is actually right click on this and convert to a validated get, connecting that to the completed there. So if this is valid, or if it's not valid, so if it has been spawned or if it hasn't been spawned. So if it is valid, we're going to drag out combat music and simply fade out like so, and that will be again, it's valid. Fade out duration, I'm going to set to two seconds, fade volume level zero. So over the course of two seconds, it will fade out to zero volume. Then we obviously want to get our game mode reference again and set music playing to false, so unticked like so. Now if we compile and save, that should be the code now done for us. So we've got it to detect the player on sight. When it does, it will start chasing and play the music. And once it stops seeing us, it will stop chasing and stop the music. So let's close this and test it out. We can drag them to our level as I've already got. And we also need to make sure we get enough mesh balance volume. So drag that into the level and scale it up to fill the full size of your level. I've already got one, so I'm gonna delete it. And to test to make sure that it is working, you can press P on your keyboard and make sure that everywhere is green. If it is green, then great, AI can walk there. If it's not green, then you need to change something to make sure it is working. Commonly, it will be collision issues or the scaling, or it's just not reaching. So again, let's hit play to test this out. So this one's seen me, it's now chasing me. Let's make sure the other one sees me as well. So they're now both chasing me. It's not playing music over each other. They're not overlapping, it's working perfectly. And if I have to hide from them, they can't see me. They've stopped chasing and the music has faded out. So that works perfectly. So I think that'll be it for this video. Is it, as we've done everything we want to do, we've set it up so we have AIs that can chase us when they see us, and when they are chasing us, that we play music which doesn't overlap with each other. And as soon as they stop seeing us, the music will fade out and they'll stop chasing, as you can see perfectly there. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.